This is an antenna installation instruction video for the 1.2 meter antenna. This is the antenna placed in a wooden crate. Along with the side strut rod, the antenna support box and the OMT unit. This is the pole mount on which the antenna is to be mounted. The first step is to remove the antenna from the wooden crate for which first the safety, safety straps are cut using a knife as being demonstrated. The nuts and the bolts at the back of the wooden crate are then removed as being demonstrated using a spanner of suitable size. The screws at the top of the wooden crate are then unfastened using a screwdriver as being demonstrated. There are two, two screws to the top and two to the sides which must be unfastened to remove the top wooden plank in the wooden crate to facilitate easy removal of the antenna from the crate. This is being done as demonstrated. The top plank is now removed and now we proceed towards removing the, the bottom plank at the back of the wooden crate. To do that we unfasten these two screws first using a screwdriver of suitable size. The screws on both sides of this plank must be unfastened in order to facilitate removal of the plank. This will enable us in moving the antenna out of the wooden crate easily. Once this is completed, we now proceed to remove the side strut rod from the wooden crate using a screwdriver. The side strut rod is screwed to the back of the wooden crate and must be removed first before removing the antenna. This is being done 
as shown in the video. The screws at both ends of the strut rod must be removed in order to facilitate easy removal of the rod from the wooden crate. Once this is completed, we remove the strut rod from the wooden crate and place it aside. And, and then we remove the wooden plank, the bottom wooden plank at the back of the crate. Now we remove the OMT radio unit and the antenna support box from the wooden crate so that the antenna can be removed from the wooden crate. The OMT radio unit, the antenna support kit and the side strut kit must be removed from the wooden crate and kept aside as being demonstrated. Once this is done, the wooden crate is tilted as being demonstrated and the antenna must be pushed out gently from the wooden crate which is being demonstrated in the video. Once the antenna is removed from the crate, it must be laid down on a flat, clean surface with the reflector and the radome facing down, as is being demonstrated. This is the drain hole, the label, the feed the two joints, the hook and this is the top of the antenna. All the joints must be fastened, of the radome must be fastened on the antenna. This is okay. 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 This is not okay. This is not okay. In order to ensure this is not okay again. This is okay. In order to ensure that the joints are properly fastened, we gently lift the antenna and press the areas gently where the joints are not aligned and fastened. We press it gently and it is ensured that the joints are properly fastened. This is okay. 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 Now we've ensured that all the eight fastenings are properly fastened and the radome is properly fit on the reflector of the antenna. Once this is completed, we now remove the 
OMT radio unit, this antenna side support side strut kit and the antenna support box from their packaging as is being demonstrated in the video. The antenna support box consists of clamps, joints, nuts and bolts that are necessary to mount the antenna on the mast. These components are being shown right now. The side strut kit consists of the nuts, bolts and clamps required to mount the antenna with the side strut. These are the components of the side strut kit. This is the OMT radio unit which is to be installed at the back of the antenna behind the feeder. This is the blanking plate. This is the vertically polarized open end of the OMT radio interface unit. Vertically polarized signal is provided from this end of the OMT. Now we proceed towards assembling parts of the antenna. These are the angle brackets. This is a three hole angle bracket and this is a five hole angle bracket. They are placed over the corresponding number of holes on the antenna. These can be interchanged depending on the side of the antenna installation and convenience. We now proceed to mount the angle brackets. This is done using 3 plus 5 pieces 
of M10 cross 35 screws along with the respective washers. They are to be placed and tightened with the finger first and then must be fastened securely using a torque of 49 Newton meter. The same must be done at both the 5 hold angle bracket and the 3 hold angle bracket. Once this is completed, we then proceed towards installing the antenna support unit. We first install or mount the pivot bracket to the angle bracket using one piece of M10 cross 40 screw, one piece of M10 cross 30 screw and one piece of M10 cross 35 screws along with the respective washers. The screws are to be fit and tightened with the finger. This is followed by mounting the M10 link screws to the pivot bracket using a 1 plus 1 piece of M10 cross 30 screws. The screws are again fit loosely. This step is being demonstrated once again. It must be ensured that the pivot bracket is aligned with the angle brackets. All the screws are first to be fit loosely. Once the pivot bracket and the link screws which are being mounted currently are completed, we then proceed towards the pipe attachment bracket which will be demonstrated shortly. We now mount four pieces of M10 cross 120 screws into the pipe attachment bracket. This is the pipe attachment bracket. The four M10 cross 120 screws are now being inserted into the pipe attachment bracket. 
as is being demonstrated. Once this is done, the pipe attachment bracket is to be mounted on the link screws first and then must be fastened using two pieces of M10 nuts. These are to be fit loosely. We then use one piece of M10 cross 120 screw to attach the pipe attachment bracket to the pivot bracket. This is then fastened in position using another piece of M10 nut as is being demonstrated. Once this is completed, we now proceed towards the side strut kit arrangement. In order to do this, we first proceed towards attaching We first attach the strut joint as was being demonstrated using to the angle bracket using an M10 cross 35 screw. Once this is done, we fit. We ensure that it is fastened in position with the side strut using an M10 cross 60 screw. Once this is completed, we proceed towards the feed. The feed must be carefully removed from the antenna. Its protective label is first removed as is being demonstrated and then we proceed to atta attach it to the OMT radio interface. The OMT radio interface must be attached to the feeder such that its guiding pins go straight into the guiding holes in the feeder as is being demonstrated after removal of the protective cover. The feeder is now securely fastened with the OMT unit using four pieces of M6 cross 16 screws with the respective washers. These must be first fixed with the hand and then tightened with a 7 Newton meter torque. Once this is completed, the feeder and the OMT unit have been attached to each other. We now attach the distance screws. These distance screws are of size M8. There are four pieces and they are hexagonal in shape. They are attached in position on the antenna as being demonstrated. They must be first attached with the fingers and then tightened with a 17 Newton meter torque. Once this is completed, we insert the feeder and the OMT attachment unit carefully into the antenna as is being demonstrated. The radio interface unit, the OMT, must first be
turned by 45 degrees and two pieces of M8.25 screws with washers must be first installed as is being demonstrated. Once this is being once this is done the OMT radio interface unit is turned back to the same position and two more pieces of M8 cross 25 screws with washers are attached to the distance screws as is being demonstrated. Once this is done, all the polarization screws must be tightened with a 24 Newton meter torque and all the M6 cross 50 screws must be tightened with a 7 Newton meter torque as is shown in the ins instru instruction manual. Once this is completed, we now proceed towards mounting the antenna on the pole mount. In order to do this, we make use of two clamp brackets as is being shown. The clamp brackets are first attached to the M10 cross 120 screws while the antenna is being hoisted as is being shown. They must first be loosely fit with four pieces of M10 nuts. And once this is done, it must be ensured that the antenna is placed correctly along the radio link path with the correct azimuth and elevation angles. If the azimuth and elevation need to be adjusted, the azimuth and elevation screws need to be turned and adjusted. To place the antenna in the correct position. Once this is done, the M10 screws can be now fastened and then the antenna can be fixed in position on the pole mount. And then we proceed towards installing the side strut kit. First, we assemble the strut mount to the pole using one piece of M10 U-bolt and two pieces of M10 nuts along with two pieces of washers as being shown. We secure the side strut to the strut mount using one piece of M10 U-bolt and two pieces of M10 nuts along with the respective washers. After we make use of the M8 U-bolts. These must be securely fastened and tightened in position. Once this is completed, the 1.2 meter antenna is assembled, installed, mounted and is ready for use. Thank you.